Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to process a portrait in On One Portrait AI. Now, as you can see, I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021. Portrait AI is integrated in On One Photo Raw 2021. You just go to the edit panel and it's right here. Now you also could purchase Portrait AI as a standalone product and it will edit images as a standalone product or as a plugin in Photoshop, Lightroom, Photoshop Elements, Affinity Photo, Capture One, Apple Photos, and Corel Paint Shop Pro. Today I'm just going to use it as it is integrated in On One Photo Raw 2021. In the description below this video, I'll have links to On One's website and you could check it out. I also have a discount code if you decide to purchase it as a standalone product or as an integration into On One Photo Raw 2021. So I have this image here. As you can see, I didn't do any processing on it at all. I'm just gonna jump right over into uh, Portrait AI. And when you do that, what it will do is if you could see right here, it already found her face. So you could see that there's a little mask there so that uh, the white part is on her face and that's the part it's going to affect. But it's actually done more than that. It's actually found her eyebrows, her eyes, her lips, her teeth, her nose, and her skin, of course. So it found all of that so that we could come in here now and we could um, just process ver very specific parts of her face. Now, it actually did some skin retouching right out of the box. If I turn this off, you could see there's before and there's after. So it did a little bit uh, with it. Now, there is a single slider here. It says it's a retouching slider. And you could simply move that to the right to give it more skin smoothing or move it to left to give it less. But if you click on this little triangle right here, it will roll open all the individual sliders that this retouching slider actually controls. So the retouching sliders is kind of like a volume control for each of these sliders. Now she does have a few blemishes, so I could move this blemish slider to the right to try to help diminish those. You could try to bring some detail back into her skin by moving this slider to the right, move it to left to lessen the detail. You could see, maybe you could see it's a little fuzzier there and there you could see the pore structure a little better there. Uh, smooth overall with this slider. As you could see that happening. Uh, texture, uh, right, that's maxed out. That just adds some texture to her skin. There's a little shine there. We could see if we could try to diminish that a little. You could see there's before and there's after. So we diminish the, sh the shine. So I'm going to put on a significant amount. Um, typically, I probably wouldn't put this much. Maybe, well, you know what? Let's just do it the way I would actually do it instead of because I say, you know, I'll do a lot so you could see it in the video. But when I'm all said and done, we'll do a before and after and you'll definitely see it. So I think that's pretty good right there. So you could see that there's a frequency separation in this drop down. If I click, there's also a different skin retouching process called surface blur. If you prefer, you would use that and you could see that the sliders change slightly. Personally, I found frequency separation to usually work best. And to tell you the truth, most professional retouchers prefer frequency separation. But by all means, if you're not getting good results with frequency separation, go to this drop down and try surface blur and see if that works. Now we'll go down to the face adjustments here. And uh, there's a brightness slider so you could brighten her face. Uh, most photographers like to do that. And I am one too. Now, you could slim the face if you want. Personally, I never, ever, ever, ever do that unless, although I never make this mistake. Um, sometimes if you take a portrait with a wide angle lens, it will distort the face and it will make it look a little wider than it actually is in real life. If that is the case, then I would come in and slim the face. But typically I will take a portrait with a portrait lens and I won't run into that issue. So that is there. Now, sometimes what I do do is I, what I do do, what I do is I enlarge the eyes a little bit. Now, not crazy. You could see that now this is making the left eye. Now it's my, on my left, it's actually her right eye. You can see how it's making it really buggy. Um, personally, I do like to ha have the eyes just enlarged a little bit. And a lot of portrait photographers will do this. Um, typically, you would do that in Photoshop. 
Uh, there is a technique in Photoshop to do that. It's a lot easier in On One Photo Raw uh, 2021 or in Portrait AI. Now, we'll go down to the eyes and let's uh, see if we could brighten those up a little bit. Oh, that's looking nice. You could whiten the iris. Now, if you go too far, it just looks ridiculous, right? So we just, or not the iris, I'm sorry, whiten the white part of the eye. If you go too far, it just looks ridiculous. And we don't want to do that. Uh, add some detail to her iris itself. Can you see that, I hope? You can see if you go too far, they look like marbles. They don't look real. Now, there are some dark circles under their, her eyes. Let's see if we could diminish those by moving that to the right. And you can see we're getting rid of that. Enhance her brows. It just basically makes them a little darker. Then we go down to the very bottom and we have the mouth. So we have teeth whitening. Now, this did apply some adjustments already. Very slight. Hopefully you could see that in the video. But you could whiten her teeth. You could make them ridiculously like, you know, those. Ever watch those morning talk shows like Good Morning America? Those people have unrealistically white teeth. Uh, so we'll just whiten those teeth like realistically, you know, something like that. Lip vibrance. You see how it's just bringing out the red in her lip a little bit. You can make the lips brighter or darker. Let's make them a little darker. And lip hue. You could change the actual lip hue as though she has like a lip gloss or lipstick on that is affecting her lip color. So like that. And that is it. We're, we're really done with the uh, portrait now. This is every adjustment. Let's do a total before after. There's before and there's after. Now, I really laid it on too thick as I look at it. And this is typically what happens to me. Um, I'll do an adjustment like this and then I'll walk away from the computer and let my kind of brain reset and my eyes rest. And then when I come back and look at it, I go, oh boy, you know, I overdid it. So then I would start backing things off. What I could do is I just could go to this retouching slider and back that off, you know, a bit. So it, it looks a little more realistic. So you could come in and then redo whatever you need to redo, but that's it. That's how easy it is to process a portrait in Portrait AI. Um, in the past, personally, I used to take portraits into Photoshop and it was really uh, a hundred step process. I'm exaggerating, right? I Realistically, it was probably a 20 step process to do a portrait because you had to do frequency separation for the skin. I actually created an action for that in Photoshop, but it still took a lot of time to do that. Then you had to do the person's eyebrows, do their eye whites, do their uh, irises. Then you had to do the bags under their eyes. You had to do the lips. All that you had to do separate steps, and it took a lot of time. It's just so much easier now in Portrait AI. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>